Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Sandra here again with another Poshmark video. Recently, I've been seeing some great momentum over on Poshmark and Macari. My reselling business has been going very well. I've been seeing more and more sales every day. I hope it stays this way. It may just be because we're heading into the busiest season of retail overall, but I'm staying hopeful. Now, it hasn't always been this way. I stumbled, made lots of mistakes, went through lots of trial and error to get to this point. And that's what this video is about today. Things I regret doing on Poshmark that had I avoided, I could have seen success much faster. I'm going to be sharing eight different things I would have done differently as a beginner on Poshmark, plus how I fixed those mistakes and some resources and action steps that you can take to fix the mistakes if you're making them or to avoid the pitfall altogether. So if you're ready to learn about some mistakes to avoid on Poshmark, make sure to support this channel by hitting the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and keep on watching. The first mistake that I made when it comes to Poshmark was that I expected instant results. When I first got started on Poshmark, I started with things from my own closet and my kids' closet, and I thought there were great styles, great brands. In my head, I thought that I was gonna post these items at a super cheap price and that they were gonna sell very quickly, and I was so wrong. I posted the items, and a lot of them sat for months and months. Some of them have just recently sold, and I know that this is a common assumption when it comes to Poshmark, people think that it's going to be something instant. They're going to post the items and they're going to sell, but that's not the way it works. I recently got a comment under one of my Poshmark videos and this lady said, hey, have you actually sold on Poshmark before? I'm lost. It seems that I've reached a lot of followers and likes and comments, but nobody has made an offer or bought anything. I'm getting bummed out. Do people actually sell on Poshmark? And I'm here to tell you, yes, people actually make sales on Poshmark. People actually make decent livings on Poshmark. But Poshmark and any other online ventures, just like any other job, you wouldn't go to a job and within the week expect to get raised to manager position or even months or a year later. It takes time to build up the experience to get to higher positions and to get paid more. And it works the same way on Poshmark. It's going to take time for you to learn, to gain some experience, and to get to that position where you're making daily sales. I know Poshmark commercials and other resellers can make it look easy. It's not done intentionally, but we just automatically assume that it's so easy and that it's gonna be instant. And Poshmark is a very simple way to make money. You just purchase items, take the pictures and post them. It's simple, but there's still a lot that goes behind it. A lot of learning behind the scenes, a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency that has to take place before you see the results. Aside from Poshmark, I have several other online income streams. And so being around this environment Environment, I've come to see this common thread where people expect instant success, including myself. That's whether it's YouTube or Amazon selling merch or any other online venture. And so with Poshmark, I caught myself early on having this mindset. I realized pretty quickly that I was expecting instant results and that that's not the way these things work. So I intentionally decided to stick with it even though I wasn't seeing the sales I wanted to in the very beginning. And I also knew that there must be some methods that I had to implement to make this thing work. And so I researched on YouTube, I read blog posts, I implemented the tips that I learned, and then from there I saw the results I was getting, I adjusted somewhat, and then I went back learn some more and that's just a common cycle that I've been on and that I will continue to be on so that I can continue to rise higher. So if you find yourself feeling like that person who commented under that video bummed out because you're not seeing the sales coming in yet, number one, be patient. Don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself time to learn the ropes. Remember that this is kind of like a job. The more experience you have, the more you will get paid. So give yourself time to learn, to gain the experience, and you'll slowly start to see sales consistently trickle in and you'll slowly start to level up as well. And then the second thing is definitely do not compare yourself, your reselling journey to someone else's. Even if you have two people start this reselling journey at the exact same time, 
the first one could go on to experience high success within a year and the second one will be here still trying to figure it out that's just the way it goes you don't know what the first reseller knew before they started reselling you don't know if they went to business school if they had other online ventures and so the knowledge they had from that one carried on to this one you just never know where people come from their backgrounds and what they already know so definitely don't compare yourself just focus on you your journey what you need to learn what you're implementing and taking action daily and there are two videos that I'm going to recommend you go watch after watching this one the first one is a video that I published recently called watch this before you start selling on Poshmark in that video I break down the very beginner fundamentals that you need to be doing every day if you want to see daily sales on Poshmark now this definitely doesn't cover everything you need to know about Poshmark there's higher level things you could be doing but for starters that video is super helpful so go watch that then the second video is one from Macy also known as the blue consignment she's a, a youtuber she makes reseller content and she made a video about her reseller story her reseller journey she shares everything from when she just got started to now she shares her numbers you're able to see the ups and downs and if you're doubting this whole Poshmark thing this is a big eye-opener this video will help inspire you and motivate you to keep on going and it solidifies the concept that I'm saying here that patience is a big requirement when starting a business of any kind online or off. Mistake number two is that I invested too much too soon so once i saw some sales coming in from the items that i posted for my own closet i decided okay now it's time to go start sourcing for items to post to start making actual profit and i decided to start with retail arbitrage which that means to go to actual retail stores to buy the items you're gonna sell as opposed to a thrift store. I went to these retail stores and I found items that I thought were good brands and good styles and that were gonna sell. I came home, took the pictures, posted them on Poshmark and nothing. These items sat and sat for a very long time and when they did end up selling, my profit was like three to five dollars. It really wasn't much. I was just a beginner on Poshmark. I was barely learning and so this was a terrible way to go about it. The items I thought were going to sell really didn't have a mass appeal on Poshmark and I was paying way too much for these items. Seeing that this was a no-go, I needed to take a step back and reevaluate my strategy if I was going to make this a sustainable income stream so I decided to switch over and start thrifting for my items to post on Poshmark and that way my investment would be much less in the future I may try retail arbitrage again when I'm more experienced and when my revenue gives way for that kind of high investment for now I'm sticking to learning the ropes via thrifting and even when it comes to thrifting I'm much more careful about what I'm picking up and how much I'm paying for it I try to do as much research as I can sometimes I'm strapped for time but as much as I can I pull up the item on Poshmark and see how much people are actually paying for it before I even consider buying an item. I recommend you do the same when it comes to Poshmark. Keep your expenses as low as possible when you're just getting started. That goes with the items you're buying to post but also with packaging, with apps, with software that's available out there to manage your Poshmark business. You can always get cute and fancy later but when you're just getting started it's best to keep everything as minimal as possible and as your income grows then you can start in investing in these different things that save time and make cuter packages. Mistake number three was that I started to move too fast. Once I made the decision to start thrifting for my items as opposed to buying them at retail stores for high prices, I decided okay my expenses are lower now it's time to go all in and that's what I did. On one of my first few trips to the thrift store everything was half off and they had a bunch of shoes that looked really nice. A lot of them were brand new and so if it looked cute I bought it. I kind of did comps on Poshmark but not really. I was just excited to find these shoes and I bought about 40 pairs of shoes. 
my thought process was that I was being efficient because that was going to be enough inventory to keep me busy for the next two to three weeks and that would save me from coming back to the thrift store. But that was a huge mistake because I didn't really know what was going to sell and what wasn't. I was still in the beginning stages. Some of those shoes did really well and they turned around for high profits, but a lot of them I let them go at super cheap prices just to get rid of them and start making space. And more than a year later, I still have like 10 pairs of those shoes that I keep sending offers to try to get rid of. I went through that process a few more times, going to the thrift store and buying too much inventory all at once. Eventually I decided, you know what, this method is not yielding the results that I want to see, so I decided decided to take it a bit slower. When I went to the thrift stores, instead of buying too much, I decided to buy at least two items for the next week. And I was more selective with the items I was choosing, trying to do comps more carefully. Slowly, I increased that number to three items for the next week. And right now, I'm at four items for the next week. So when I go to the thrift store, I go there with the intention to only get four items for the next seven days. Sometimes it's a little bit less, sometimes it's a little more, but that is my goal when I head to the thrift store. And I plan to slowly move that number up over time as I become comfortable with posting for a day. So if you're just getting started, I recommend that you take it slow. Go to the thrift store about once a week and pick up enough items to post one to two a day for the next week after that. This gives you a chance to see how the items perform on Poshmark and you slowly gain the experience so that you can make more profitable picks when you go back to the thrift store. But also posting one to two a day keeps you consistent on the app, which in my experience, gives you more chances of making sales. Mistake number four was that I bought damaged goods. So because I was moving too fast and trying to be efficient when I was going to the thrift store, I was getting many items that had huge flaws on them so I couldn't sell and I was stuck with them because these thrift stores have a no refund policy. If I would have been more careful, I wouldn't have lost out on this money. I still make this mistake now sometimes the only difference is that now the flaws that I do miss are very minor flaws. For example, recently I picked up an All Saints black tunic with the chain neckline. This could have easily sold for $35, maybe $40, I'm pretty sure. But I ended up selling it for $18 because it had a small hole and a small little snag on the side. And so that's all I got for it. So I'm not saying don't pick up any defective items because they could still possibly sell if they have a small flaw. But if you know about the flaw, then you can make a more accurate decision whether to pick it up or to invest your money elsewhere. When I'm at the thrift store, my process goes like this. I go through all of the racks and the only thing I'm looking for is a super unique style. Something different, something that stands out. And once I find something that meets those requirements, I will look over the entire item, make sure that zippers zip properly, that buttons can button, that there's no rips, no snags, under collars, on the sleeves, make sure everything is in good condition. And only then will I check the brand and look up comps on Poshmark to see if I should pick up the item or not. And right before I go to pay, I go to a well-lit place in the thrift store and look over the items one last time. Sometimes there's a long line at this thrift store, so I will get in line and as I'm waiting there, I will take all the items off the hangers and look over each piece carefully one more time. At the shoes, I will look inside to make sure that there's no uh, big damages. I'll look all over the shoe, under the shoes, the zippers, and all of that, as I said. So I recommend you do the same. Make sure you look over these items very thoroughly. And right before you go to pay, go to a well-lit place and look over them one more time. Especially white material or chiffon material, like that super thin polyester material. Those are very easy to get damaged. So make sure to look over your goods as best as you can to avoid buying things that you cannot sell. Mistake number five is that I was buying things that were too cheap to pass up. In the beginning, if things were a dollar or 50 cents and it looked decent, 
I was picking it up. I mean, I buy it for such a low price. I can list it for a very low price and it surely will sell very quickly, wouldn't it? Nope, I was totally wrong. Some of the items that I picked up for a dollar years ago are still in my closet right now with zero likes and zero attention. What I didn't realize then that I realize now is that I have to take my time into account with all of these things. It's not just the shopping you're doing. You're also steaming, cleaning, photographing, writing down the description, sharing, answering questions. If the item is not selling, then you're gonna go on to relist the item. So this ends up costing you more in the long run. I hope I don't lose you with all of this math, but I thought this bit was important to add in here to really make my point. So this is how I divide my time into each item that I post on Poshmark. When I go shopping to a thrift store, I normally spend about three hours in the thrift store sorting through everything. I end up taking home about 20 items. Now this hours and these items change. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but this is average for me. So when I divide the three hours by the 20 items, I messed up there, so don't, don't pay attention to that, but that makes it about five minutes per item. It took me about five minutes to sort through and find each of these 20 items. When I get home, I prep the items. That means I take off any tags. I steam the items. I maybe sometimes have to do some shaving off the sweaters and stuff like that. All that prepping, it takes me about an hour to prep 20 items. So that makes it three minutes per item. When it comes to pictures, it takes me about five minutes per picture, but that includes measurements as well because I take my measurements measurements within the pictures and I know all of these numbers are probably higher than most people I move a bit slow it's the perfection tendencies in me that I'm still trying to get a hold of and bring these numbers down but for now this is what I am working with so next it takes me about 10 minutes to post an item that means to edit the pictures to look for keywords to come up with uh, the descriptions to upload the photos and to just post it on Poshmark it takes me about 10 minutes per item especially if I'm trying to find a good stock photo and trying to edit a stock photo and things like that then I'd say that It'd be about five minutes to share the item while it's in my closet. It takes just a little bit to share one single item, but this also includes questions you may have to answer, offers you're sending out, closet clear out management, all of those things will be included in the share, five minutes. So we end up with 28 minutes to process one single item from start to finish, from shopping to hopefully selling it, 28 minutes. So I rounded that up to 30 minutes just for easy math. And then when you take these 30 minutes that it took you to process a whole item into consideration, which would you rather be making? $5 profit in 30 minutes, $7, $10, or $20? If you make $20 profit in 30 minutes, that's the equivalent of making $40 an hour if you sell two items at a $20 profit. So this is what I'm working towards right now. Most of my profits are ranging between here and here, seven to 10. On occasions, I get $20 profit. Sometimes it's even 40, but those are outliers at the moment. But I'm working towards this. My philosophy now is that it's better to pay up for an item, five, seven, ten dollars or more, if the item is gonna sell quickly. If I list it and it sells the same day or within a week for 15 or 20 dollar profit that's a much better investment than something that's going to sit for years moving forward when i find an item that is cheap or even when i get items for free because i was getting bags of items for free for a while i'm going to take my time into consideration the time that it's gonna take to get the item listed and sold. Each item I post on Poshmark has to have a good projected profit in order for me to consider listing it in the first place. That means it has to be a good brand and or it has to be a good, unique, or rare style, something that people are searching for on Poshmark so that it's worth my time. And your action step for here is to do the same. Don't pick up stuff just because it's cheap Take your time into consideration when you're debating whether to pick up something or not. Mistake number six is that my descriptions for my 
listings on Poshmark were terrible. Going into Poshmark, I knew how important keywords were. And before I go any further, let me tell you what a keyword is in case you're new to all of this and you have no idea what a keyword actually is. I'm gonna go to Google for this because he or she always knows best. It says a keyword is an informative word used in an information retrieval system to indicate the content of a document. So that means that the words that you use in your title and in your description on your Poshmark listings are retrieved by Google or by Pinterest or by other search engine softwares and this tells them what's inside it. So if someone's searching for say Levi's jeans and you have that in your closet and you use the proper keywords, the proper verbiage in your title and description, your listing is much more likely to be shown to this person who is searching for these Levi's jeans. In other words, the better words, the better keywords you have in your descriptions, the higher chances that people will see your listing and buy from you. So I knew all of this going in, being that I've been on YouTube, I've run a blog, and I've been on Pinterest and all of these things. I knew how important keywords were. The problem was that I didn't know which keywords to use to describe my items. My solution for this was that I Googled a lot. When I just got started and I was making listings on Poshmark, I used Google. I would look at the item and describe it as I saw it on Google and find a picture of the exact item sometimes, but sometimes it was just an item that looked similar to it. It would be from different retail stores like Target, Walmart, Macy's, JCPenney. If it looked similar to mine, I would click on it and see how they were describing their item to learn how to describe mine. And that's how I slowly started to learn these different keywords people use to describe items, what different necklines and collars and sleeves, what different jeans are called and shoes and boots. There's so many different names to call these things. And sometimes people are looking for an exact item and they already know what it's called. So they search that on Google. And if my item has those words that they put into Google, my item has a higher chance of showing up. So that's why this is super important. And I still have a lot of growing to do in this area, but I am definitely a lot better than I was before. Learning what keywords to use to describe your items is going to come over time. It's just a learning process. There's really no super quick way to get there other than to do your due diligence. Use the Google method I just talked about. But there are two more resources that I want to share with you. And the first one is Kaylee here on YouTube. She has a channel where she shares super informative videos. I love her hauls. I love her what sold videos because she describes her items really well. She explains why she picked up certain items. So she's an invaluable resource when it comes to Poshmark. But specifically for this area, the keywords, she has a playlist called Keyword Series. And in that series, she has a bunch of videos where she talks about the different keywords to use different fabrics and dresses and jeans and coats and different things to call these items. So if you want to learn more about keywords, check out that playlist. And the second resource is from Rebecca the Reseller, another YouTuber, and she has an Etsy store where she has a bunch of tools for resellers, but also she has keyword lists that she has for sale. They're like two to three dollars, and in there she has curated some keywords that you could possibly use in your descriptions as well. Mistake number seven is that I was writing inaccurate descriptions. So aside from having weak keywords in my descriptions, sometimes I was actually putting in incorrect information. The sizing to be exact, so on Poshmark, you have your title, you have your description, but there's also drop down menus where you get to choose your size. And sometimes those weren't matching up for me. I was putting size medium and size small in other places. And I was just making so many mistakes because I think I was moving too fast, working too many long hours. I don't know what the case was, but I was making too many mistakes. On one occasion, I had a case opened up against me because I said a shirt was a small, but it was actually a medium and it was way too big for her and so Poshmark returned her the money let her keep the item and let me keep my earnings as well so that worked out good 
and then on a second occasion a uh, buyer left a four star review she said she loved the coat so much but she thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than it was and it fit her too snug but she loved it so she was going to keep it but she wished it was the right size to avoid these kind of scenarios nowadays i try to double and triple check my work before i publish an item on poshmark i go back over to make sure that the tag size matches with the size I wrote in the description which then matches with the size I chose on the drop down menu. It only takes like two to three seconds to go back over your work so I recommend you do this to avoid cases opening up against you or bad reviews. This goes with your labels as well that you're putting on your packages. Double make sure before you tape it on there and send it off that it's the correct label because that's something I've done in the past as well put the wrong label on the wrong package. As your store grows and you have more items, these kind of mistakes are kind of inevitable. They may happen because you have so many items to take care of, but just check over your stuff to make sure that these kind of mistakes happen a little less often. Mistake number eight was that I didn't know my numbers. When it comes to math and numbers, this comes really easily to some people and for others numbers is the least fun part of the job for me i'm somewhere in the middle i like math and numbers i love equations and figuring out things but when it comes to this part of business i'm a total rookie a total newbie at this and so when it comes to business numbers i avoid it whenever possible and that's what i did with poshmark for a very long time I did not know what I was making versus what I was investing. I mean, I knew mentally item by item, I paid this much for it, I'm getting this much and this is my profit, but I kept it all in my head. I never actually sat down to map out the numbers to kind of see how I was doing and this was a big mistake. There's a quote that says, what gets measured gets managed. And eventually I came to terms with this my Poshmark success depends on knowing my numbers because when I know my numbers, I can manage them better and direct them to reach my revenue goals. When I know my numbers, I can make better business decisions, I can know where and how to invest, and I can spot problems early so that I can fix them. Like I said, I'm still new at this part of business and I'm still learning. Eventually, I'd like to invest the time to learn Excel to keep track of my numbers or invest in a different program. I know Sarah Styles has a dashboard that makes it easy to keep track of your Poshmark numbers, but I also know that's an investment that I don't want to make right now. Now. eventually I will but for now I'm using Evernote to keep track of my sales every week on Sunday I go back over my numbers for the last seven days here are some of the numbers that I keep track of and I calculate every seven days the first one is final sales and earnings and this is obvious it's just the final sales that you made on Poshmark or wherever you're reselling and the earnings you get to keep after they take out their cut and any shipping discounts. The second number are investments, so that includes cost of goods, COGs, but also supplies that you bought that week, any printer, paper, boxes, tape, anything like that, apps and softwares that you use for your business. If the monthly payment was due within that week, I will calculate that as well. And same for services. If I paid for any services during that week, that number will go along with all of these into the investments. From there, number three, I calculate profits. That means for each item. So after the earnings that I get to keep after Poshmark takes out their cut and the cost of goods, what is my profit for each item? But then also overall for the whole business after my earnings, after paying all of these things, how much am I being left over with overall? Number four, I keep track of my average selling price. Average selling price ASP just means net sales divided by number of items sold. For example, if you sold $500 in a week, you sold 25 items, you divide that and then you get a $20 ASP. That's your average selling price. And this is important because, as I said earlier, you want to keep increasing um, 
your profits to make your time worth it and this is a number to keep your eye on if you want to do that you want to keep track of this number to make sure it's steadily increasing and if nothing else that it's not declining because if it is that means you're making bad picks that means you're picking up items that people are not willing to pay up for and you need to do a little research to pick up better items same thing with the sell through rate that's number five str and that is item sold divided by items available that will give you your sell through rate and basically this just means how fast are your items selling? Are they sitting for a long time? Or are you selling them within a week, within a month? This number is important to keep track of for that. Because if this number falls too low, that means the items you're picking up are not good either. They will eventually sell, everything does, but the faster it sells, the faster you get your money back so that you can reinvest. So keeping track of this number is important as well. And keeping track of these numbers weekly has really given me a better idea of what's working and what it's not when it comes to Poshmark. I really recommend you do the same. If you're just starting, just start with any note taking app such as Evernote and keep track of your weekly numbers. I'm pretty sure there's many more numbers you can calculate in your Poshmark business, but the five that I mentioned earlier is a pretty good starting point. And if you don't know the formulas to calculate these numbers, use Google be resourceful. It's better to learn these things now. Lastly, I recommend you go watch a video by Nicole State. She is a content creator here on YouTube. She's like an OG reseller. She really knows her stuff and she has a video on how to get to make $10,000 on Poshmark. In that video, she breaks down the formula of the numbers you need to know and what you need to do to get to $10,000. Even if that's not your goal right now, you can still go and use the formula to make $2,000 and then $3,000 and slowly build up. That is a great resource for starters to know what it's going to take to make this successful. This was by no means a complete list of all the mistakes that I've made on Poshmark. I just shared the most common common ones, but I'm still learning every day, still making more mistakes, still finding new ways of doing things, and I'll continue to share all that on this channel. So make sure you subscribe for more of this type of content. Everything that I mentioned will be linked down in the description below. And for more Poshmark tips and tutorials, check out the playlist on your screen right now. And that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.